Hey, Mr. Maestas here, and in this video, I'm going to go over secant lines and average rate of change. So let's talk about what a secant line is first. So I've got here a function, and this is just a general graph, y equals f of x. And y equals, y equals f of x looks something like this, goes up and down, and, and the secant line... A secant line is any line that crosses through two points of a function. So here you can see that the red line here is my secant line. It crosses through two points, x equals a and x equals b. And notice here that a and x equals a, this point is f of a, right? Because I would plug it into my function. And this point right here, is f of b, all right, so I have the point a comma f of a, and the point b comma f of b, all right? So all I'm saying here is that it's a line that goes through a function. And the line, secant line, can be found by finding the slope and then using the point-slope formula and plug in the point-slope formula. So you can find the equation of that secant line. Now. Secant lines are, are special because they're used in calculus to start to look at um, a rate of change, average rate of change, and then in calculus we go even further and we look at something called instantaneous rate of change. But for now we're going to look at average rate of change. And the average rate of change is the slope of the secant line. So what you would do is you, you we're basically going to use a slope formula. So the average rate of change the average rate of change of this function, now we're talking about the function, because the function, you know, it curves and it changes all the way through, um, through this function, changes all the way through the x values. But how does it change? You know, in a line, we know that the line has a slope that goes on, you know, goes on forever. It's the same slope the whole time. But a function doesn't do that. It kind of, kind of goes up and then it changes slope down and then maybe it changes slope up again. Uh, or, or maybe it, it has negative and then positive slope, or maybe it goes horizontal. It does all kinds of different things, right? So we're interested in maybe seeing, wh well, what's the average rate between two points? So the average rate of change between two points, we're going to use the secant line. We're going to go two points, and we're going to find the slope between those two points. The formula for that, excuse me, is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. You know, it's really just a, it's just a slope formula. It's y2 minus y1 equals x2 minus x1, just, you know, disguised. So um, we're going to plug in b and we're going to plug in a into our function. And then we're going to divide that by the difference of the x values. Okay? So this is the same, you know, this is the, the change in y over change of x. Same, same thing as slope. Same thing. Okay? So let's look at a couple of practice problems here. Um, here's my first example. Let's suppose for some position we have um, an object that's flying, it's going around or flying up or going up and down or something. The object, though, can be described at any position, any time t, the position of this object can be described by this function. And I want to find the average rate of change. Okay, I want to find the average rate of change between to find the average rate of change in the first three seconds. All right, so, so this formula, uh, this, function, this function is the function that describes the position of, of, of whatever this is, like a bug or a particle, at time t, and we're going to find the average rate of change of that. Sometimes if we're dealing with position, you'll find this if you take if you take physics, um, in, in terms of position, the average rate of change of position is velocity. So we're talking about average velocity here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a formula. So um, the average rate of change is going to be, in this case, S of B minus S of A over B minus A. Now, B is the one we're ending with because you can see over here we're going from here to here. So in this case, from 0 to 3 seconds. So S of B is going to be S of 3 minus S of 0 over 3 minus 0. 
Now we're going to want to plug this value here into our function. So we're going to go and plug in 3 into our s function here. So we're going to have, I'll do a little math up here, negative 2 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 1, negative 18. It's going to give us negative 8. All right, so we've got negative 8. Um, we're going to plug 0 in. 0 is going to give us 1, so minus 1 over 3, which is going to give us negative 3. All right? We got negative 9 over there over 3, negative 9 over 3. So uh, we found that the, um, the velocity in this case, because it's the average rate of change of this position function, the average rate of change is going to be negative 3. We probably want to have some units to that. Um, you know, maybe uh, meters per second is, is normal. Um, so maybe we might want to use that one, meters per second. So let's take a look at this one. Um, you know what, folks, they're, they're all the same way. Use a slope formula. Um, we could find the equation of the secant line if we really wanted to. So um, I guess context ways would be, uh, it would be the equation of the velocity, the equation of the average velocity given time t in between there. So. Um, we can do that by using our formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we'll go ahead and plug in our values. So y1 was, uh, we'll go ahead with, um, well, I guess it really doesn't matter which one we go with. Let's go with uh, s of 0. So s of 0 was negative 1, and the slope was negative 3 and x of 1 and 0. All right, so here's our equation of our secant line. If we wanted to, we can simplify that into um, slope-intercept form and just uh, multiply with negative 3 in there. And we would have y equals negative 3x minus 1. All right, so this is the equation of the secant line. All right, here is a practice problem for you. And if you want, uh, go and do the practice problem, and then I will come back and work out the practice problem for you so you can check your answer, okay? So here it is. Determine the average rate of change and the equation of the secant line of f of x equal 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 in the interval x between 0 and 2. So you might want to pause this now. I'm going to erase the board here, and then uh, I will do the solution to that. Okay, so we've got the equation, we've got the function 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. And I want to first find the average rate of change. Okay, so the average rate of change is going to be f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Um, we're going between 0 and 2. So a in this case is 0 and b is 2. Okay, so we're going to plug those in. So we're going to have f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. Let's go ahead and plug those into our uh, function here, see what that is. Okay, so we're going to have 2 squared, which is 4, times 3 is 12, minus 2 times 4, 8 plus 1, is going to give us 4 plus 1, 4 plus 1, which is 5. Minus f of 0 is going to give us 1 over 2, which gives us a slope of 2, or an average rate of change of 2, a slope of 2 for our secant line. So now we're going to find the equation of our secant line, and we're going to go ahead and go y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y1, let's go ahead and use uh, f of 0. y1 is 1, m is 2, and x1 is 0. Plug that out. So it's plus one. This is our equation of our secant line. Okay. All right, there you go, folks. Secant lines and average rate of change. If you have anything else you want to uh, take a look at, let, let me know in the comments section, and uh, we'll see you next time.